Hello, everyone. This is Susan Gerbeck from Psychics Explained. I am doing another video on Operation Dill Pickle. This is the second of a series of videos that are over a year old. The reason why they're over a year old, and I'm just now releasing them, is because I was planning on doing something different with this psychic medium, Lady Phyllis. And I don't think I'm going to do what I was going to do with her. So I'm releasing the videos. It's it's more than time to release them. Um, this is the second. The first video that you will see in this playlist is me getting a reading from Lady Phyllis. And I am in the character of Joanne. My video is off. I'm wearing a bike guard so that my voice isn't recognized because um, there is one person in this Zoom call with, I think there's eight or 10 of us. I can't quite remember. It's been over a year. And the person who's assisting Lady Phyllis is Tracy. And Tracy used to work for Thomas John for several years. And she knows exactly who I am. Uh, so I had to disguise my voice and turn off the video. What we were trying to do in this operation dill pickle is to try to find out several questions about lady phyllis now lady phyllis is recommended by thomas john if you see the previous video the first video i did in this series you'll see thomas john recommending lady phyllis and he says she's very ethical and what he I was trying to do is see, well, you know, is she, if she's a student of Thomas John, is she hot reading? And so what you're about to watch is uh, my attempt to prove if she's hot reading or not. Most psychics who, uh, most psychics cold read. Um, most psychics do, uh, do not hot read. Thomas John almost always hot reads, but from the years of following him around and watching hours of his work and watching the work of his students, it looks like he never teaches his students to hot read. He keeps that close to his heart, his, how his method of that. And I don't know if this is true, but I feel like that his students wouldn't go for it because hot reading is beyond cheating. It is really lying. You're, you're looking up social media and repeating it back to the person pretending you're getting it from spirit. So I don't think that the mediums that work with him are aware that he does that. I don't know how they're able to ignore it, but uh, you know, I don't know, but I do not think that they would ethically do that. The more I watch the videos or participate in these readings with these mediums that you would never have heard of that have a very, very low footprint in the world of psychic mediums is that they seem to also be victims. They have bought into this idea that everybody is psychic. If you practice enough and if you pay enough with um, training, and they do workshops and and uh, seminars and read things and and meetups and stuff. You know, uh, generally always for with a cost. So I have a feeling that these people, most of these, and I'm I'm not talking about the Tyler Henrys, the John Edwards, the Teresa Caputo's. The I'm not talking about that world because that is a different kind of psychic. The psychics I'm, I'm looking at now, right now, are those no-name no psychics that have a very small footprint. So I just don't, I think they bought into this partly because they did buy into the readings and the workshops and the seminars. And uh, it seems like a lot of these are people looking for a second income. A lot of them seem to be stay-at-home moms or um, not highly paid people. So they're, they're also, a lot of them seem to be in grief. Um, and so instead of paying for readings, they're, they're learning how to do it themselves. 
and they say psychics can't, you know, give themselves a reading, give you a break. Um, <laughs> you, hear, you hear all about these rules. Uh, <laughs> there's no rules, you guys. They make up whatever they feel like making up. So maybe they're trading off with another psychic. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so what you're going to see today, this is the second to the last reading of a, I think it was three hours, no, two hours, two and a half hours. Or so, I don't know. It felt like forever of readings with a Lady Phyllis, as I said, about a year ago. And I paid for myself and for somebody else to be in this event, the Zoom event. And what I did is I approached Lady Phyllis on social media, I believe, and I let her see my profile on Facebook, which had bait if she wanted to take it. And then I created bait for Cindy who you're going to see who's going to be the sitter today. And I created a backstory that was um, definitely not anything that had to do with Cindy. Because I don't want accidentally to create a scenario that it's going to end up looking like um, they hot read, but it actually did meet her, meet her real life. Okay, so I think I can tell you that what I created was the story was I wanted it to sound like she had some money. And I said that her husband was a pilot, I think Singapore airlines, and he was getting ready to retire. Maybe it wasn't Singapore airlines. I don't even know if I mentioned the airline, but he was getting ready to retire, but he was in Singapore and he did not wake up. You know, he was supposed to be a, down, you know, he was on a layover and he went to bed and he didn't wake up. And then the hotel came in, staff came in and found that he had died in his sleep. So, and you know, what a mess that was. And so I created that backstory because it was nothing at all like Cindy's real life history. I mean, zero. And one of the things to make doubly sure, because I created fake names for her and everything, I asked Cindy if the fake names that I created had anything to do with her real family. And she's like, well, I kind of went to high school with somebody, with, you know, so nothing that was close. And then I had Cindy write down an email, write an email to me of all the things that she thought if a psychic was really, 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 really contacting her dead human beings, people around her, what would we expect to find? So she wrote that to me in an email, sent it to me, and I didn't open it up beforehand. I just did it as a control to be able to see if later when Cindy was able to look at the reading, well, she's obviously in the reading, but I didn't want her to know the backstory. So Cindy had no idea what the backstory. She didn't know anything about a pilot husband dying in Singapore. She knew nothing about that. So that when she later learned about it, she could see if that matched her real life story at all, okay? Or or see if Lady Phyllis came up with anything that really was her real life story. Got it? Okay, it's a little complicated. It's double-blinded, and that's how I do my stings because I don't want to be any ambiguity, ambiguity any ambiguity <laughs> about if, the psychic actually um, got information from the spirit world or not, okay? So what you're going to watch is Cindy and Lady Phyllis going at it. And Lady Phyllis was given all this information ahead of time. And I know she saw it because she responded to my message. So when I wrote to Lady Phyllis and talked to her about getting my friend in, you know, hopefully there's room for my friend to be able to go to, to this thing because she really needs a reading. This is the first time she's ever had a reading and her husband, you know, was a pilot and, you know, I gave her the story and then Lady Phyllis responded. So I know she saw that message and she knew my friend's name, which wasn't Cindy. And um, so I know she saw the bait. 
Now, let's look and see if she took it. Now, the thing is, is Cindy does not know what that information is. So I have told Cindy that she's just to respond, okay, in positive. Now, also, I am live streaming, live streaming the entire event to a group of people who are watching this as it happens live. And they're making comments and so on. The other thing I'm doing is I'm having a conversation with Cindy, her and I. We're just messaging back and forth. So as Lady Phyllis gives her some kind of information, like a brother, a husband, a name or something like that, a dog, whatever, I'm responding to her saying, answer yes, answer no, answer I don't know, or say whatever you want. You know, I'm answering Cindy and she's taught to pause and then look at the message that I send, respond accordingly. Because I... If Lady Phyllis gets the information correct, I want Cindy to be able to say, yeah, that's my brother or whatever. But that's done only after Lady Phyllis has given the statement. And we see that Lady Phyllis gives a lot of questions, asks a lot of questions. Okay. Sorry, that gets a little complicated. I'm going to break in a few times as we do this. I haven't looked at this video in a long time. So hopefully... Uh, we'll see how I do if I remember well. Please leave your comments, um, especially as it's going on. Um, I really hope that you enjoy this kind of thing. And um, please like, share, subscribe, hit the alert bell as I come out with more and more videos. I um, These are tedious to do uh, in real life. They're tedious to review and to transcribe and so on. And it's tedious for me to have to go over again. But I want full transparency. I like to have everybody see exactly what's going on. Keep in mind, we're looking to see is, is Lady Phyllis giving medical, legal, or health advice, which are three things that a psychic medium should never do. Is she being ethical? Um, is she helping, you know, in any way? I I want to know what those five things are, if she's doing any of those things. So that's kind of what we're looking for. And um, so if you see something, you know, write it down, leave it for me in the comments. I love reading your guys' comments. Um, I think that's it. Um, I'll break in from time to time. I don't remember how long the reading is. I think it's 10 or 15, 10 minutes or so. I'll break in a couple times. Cindy is quite confused because she's not sure how to, <laughs> where this is going. And <laughs> oh, well, see how many, com um, watch for how many questions that Lady Phyllis gives. And does she seem empathetic? Does she seem um, kind? Um, does she seem confused? Is she giving specifics and what is missing? I love that part. We always forget that. What should be there, right? What should be in that reading that she's that is not there? You know, is she giving names? Is she actually really validating the reading? And we get that, we hear that all the time from the psychics. They say, oh, she gave me things that nobody could have possibly have known. But people misremember. They don't watch the video or they don't even get a video or audio. Let's go check this out. the darn water pill you uh you have three more okay yeah i i saw some people i couldn't see i know michelle was there so i was torn between michelle and diane yeah Hi, and how are you i'm fine okay so diane i'm going to ask you right away is your mom on the other side no so who's the female on the other side Do you have a mother-in-law that's on the other side not a mother-in-law um my aunt your aunt but it's of that generation i have a female on the other side who would be in your mom's generation yeah. so was she were you close with this aunt 
Yes. Yeah. Um, did, did, um, did you live with her at any point? Yeah. Well, well not really. I, I visited her a lot, but I, she never really left, lived with her. Yeah, because, because I'm getting like more than just a aunt and niece kind of relationship that she that she had a big impact on your life. Was did, did you did she influence you on what you did? Like um, whatever, whatever you ended up doing for a living, was she the major influence on you? She she encouraged me to to follow my heart. Right. Are you the artist? want to be artist <laughs> want to be artist but this aunt like it's a very special relation she thought you were very special she thinks you're very special and she wants you to know has she been gone a long time actually she passed pretty recently yeah but when they say that they've been gone a long time was there something going on with her brain where she was kind of out of it for a while um actually no okay i i think i i wasn't there when she died okay um but her daughter my cousin said that um right towards the end she seemed to be hallucinating because what i get is a distance from her like yeah. i get a feeling that she was not present for a long time but it could be that she, if she was hallucinating that that's not being present so she was sort of out of it but yeah. um, she's she's stopping in to say that you're very special and she had a great relationship with you and um is there a lack of communication between you and your mom no i went through my aunt so i'm sorry what kind of communicated through my aunt okay yeah because i'm getting a distance here and she kind of made up the and she's apologizing that she wasn't there and that's why i was asking was she gone for a while because i feel like your mom is still here and you're missing your aunt your aunt was the person who really kind of made it easier for you yeah. was your dad not in the picture no he was there yeah and is your dad on the other side um yes because i'm also getting a distance from him i'm feeling like there's friction between you and your mom or or let's say a, a like a disconnect between you and your mom and he's he feels like kind of removed from it does that make sense to you well my parents were divorced that okay well that yeah, yeah so yeah so okay i get it all right you know i only go by what i'm feeling okay fill it out who's the h name herman harry henry for you living or dead nobody with an h name nobody with an h name all right so i'm going to leave that there and because i am getting an h name and, I, and there's no helen or helene right Okay, I'm making notes. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> I haven't seen this in a while. Okay, I don't know what you guys have written down. Lots of questions she's asking. Um, Lady Phyllis is asking a lot of questions and not making a lot of statements, and she's being very broad. So first off, it's your mom. I mean, she's judging the age of Cindy, and it's likely from the age that she's, uh, you know, Cindy looks on the screen that her mother and father would probably be dead. I mean, you know, if Cindy was a 20 year old or a 30 year old, well then Lady Phyllis would probably might have gone to a grandparent or or something of the sort, but she went to a mom for Cindy. Uh, mother-in-law, <laughs> anybody? Uh, how about an aunt? <laughs> Cindy finally relents and says, okay, my, you know, she's all right with an aunt. Um, did you live with her? And then I love this artist thing. And there's another video that I haven't shown you yet. It hasn't come out yet um, that I remember that I've I've seen in the same session of, you know, the same Zoom call 
where she's giving a reading to another woman and she starts talking about artists and painting and stuff like that. And just like in Cindy's case, the background has these beautiful art has in Cindy's definitely there's some beautiful, um, you know, modern art, very colorful. It's a huge part of the background. And so she mentions this artist being, you know, an artist because it's obvious Cindy loves art and it's probably very likely that maybe the art in her background is Cindy's art. And as I said, there'll be another video that comes out um, in another day that is, she does the same thing to another woman who has a big piece of art behind her too. You know, something about taking painting classes and that kind of thing. Um, has your, has, has your aunt been gone a long time? You know, again, what is a long time mean? And was it, her brain and was she out of it all right okay so at what point are they out of it near the end 10 minutes before they die two days before they die six months before they die at what point would we say out of it because um i just watched my partner die two months ago and um yeah there's phases of what happens so uh, you can you can you know that they're out of it or they're you know not com communicating correctly but where they could have been completely clear a few days before that distance this thing about distance again she starts out with distance and then she's kind of it could mean physical distance but in this case she she says it was um uh, you know emotional distance because she's starting to pick up on that and that's how where lady phyllis goes for a while and then they go on to the platitudes. Oh, you're special. She's watching out for you, blah, blah, blah. And this communication. Now, you notice that Cindy's hesitation. Now, Cindy's very nervous. Cindy doesn't want to mess this up. And I told her, you know, it'll be fine. We Zoomed right before this and had a, a you know, a, a discussion of what might happen and, and that kind of thing. But still, Cindy's being very cautious and, and she's pausing. She's trying to think about what to say. But what's going on? is zero um, anything that has to do with what the story I gave uh, Lady Phyllis in the message that I sent her that she did see. Nothing's hitting, absolutely zero. At this point, she's not hot reading at all. So when I'm messaging Cindy, I'm just saying, I don't know. Uh, I think I put a question mark, which means she can answer any way she wants because it's 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 not sticking to the story to try to prove that she's hot reading. So Cindy is looking at that and going, I, I can respond anyway. You know, she dead, she's alive, what killed her, you know, what people's names are. She can say whatever she wants because there's nothing being hit. This is all cold reading being done by Lady Phyllis. Um, she's certainly not hitting anything else. Okay, so uh, is the dad in picture? Well, is he alive? Is he on the other side? Whatever that is. Okay, is dad not in picture? And so she's Cindy's having to come up with, I don't know, is, uh, no, he's not in the picture. And then my parents divorced and so on. So she's starting to talk about this. Now this, this um, alphabet letter stuff that they give. Now there's a huge difference between Herman, Henry and Harry, Helen and Helene. I mean, they all start with an H, but pick one. Um, what is, if, if you are hearing a name that's an H name, then ask, you know, get more clarity. Can you spell it for me? I mean, what is it these dead people are supposed to be doing is like, hey, I'm getting, I'm, I'm, you know, what is it, is it, does she hear an H <laughs> sound or is she, huh, huh, you know, or is she seeing like a floating disembodied H going by? I mean, they've never made it very clear to me how that works. Are they just seeing like, like a hand writing an H or something like that? I mean, what is it? Do you feel the letter? Is is it like a, a feeling these mediums get that sees a letter? Like, I feel the H. Like, I guess people say they smell colors and hear numbers. And Okay. what What do you mean that you can't? You can see a letter of the alphabet. You're getting a letter of the alphabet. But what about the other? What Just give us the rest of the letters of the alphabet in, in, in order. Is it H-E-L-E-N? Um, can we get the last name maybe? Can you tell me who it is? I mean, Henry, Harry, Helen, Helene, Herman. 
Now, I didn't look, but I bet you anything, if we looked it up on the Social Security database that keeps track of all baby names in, in the United States and the Social Security back from the 1900s, and they would probably figure out that Cindy's older generation would be uh, probably born around the 1940s. Let me pause a second here, and I will go take a quick look and see. Okay, so let's just look this up together. Psychics who cold read go to these kinds of websites. It's just a thing that they do, knowing what names are popular at certain times of, of generations, if you're talking about Americans. Okay, so let's look at this together. This is the uh, Social Security Baby Name Database. So popular baby names. Anybody could look at this. You don't need a subscription to look this up. You're going to go over here to where it says popular baby names. And you can go by decade. And you can see how popular a name would, prop, would have been. So I think that if we click on this. Mm, there's a way of going to this. It's different. Let me see. Come on, Gerbic, you can do it. I think it's in here. So if her if her family members were probably in the 40s, the 1940s, just say her parents or or her aunts or um of anybody who an uncle, aunt, you know, that kind of thing, or her parents, that generation, maybe it'd be the 1940s. And you can see here in the 1940s, these are the popular names for males or females. And let's see if we type in, we've got Her Herman, Henry, Harry, Herman, Henry, and Harry. So here's Henry. It's the 37th most popular name. Um, Herman, I can't imagine Herman would be popular. But Her Harold might be one for Harry. And then for, for the name Helen, let's see. Let's put in a search. There's Helen. It's the 32nd most popular name. So let's see if let's see if um Herman comes up. Hundred and fortieth most popular male name for a baby in the nineteen forties, and so you can kind of tell that those are all names within the kind of you know the night uh, popular range. So a psychic does know these things because it's cold reading; it's a cold reading tactic that they use, and it can tell you like in the nineteen forties the most popular names were James, Robert, John, William, and Richard. And for a girl was Mary, Linda, Barbara, Patricia, and Carol. So if we wanted to pick the 1930s and go there, let me show you. You guys can play around with this. It's quite interesting. So in the 1930s, Robert, James, John, William, Richard, Mary, Betty, Barbara, Shirley, Patricia were the popular names. So here's Harold again. And the other names we had were Henry. 26 so it moved up in popularity well it moved it didn't move up in popularity because we're looking at the 30s but it went it became less popular in the 1940s but it's still very popular in the 30s and harry let's see what harry looks like harry's 37th and let's look at helen 10th most popular name in the 1930s so if we were to look at those names in the same age that um, that Cindy was, like maybe hoping for a sister or brother, so we'd look at like the 1950s. Anyway, you guys get the idea. We don't need to go through this. So here is uh, this psychic is using the same tactics that almost all psychics who cold read use, which is using a, a popularity of a name 
and throwing it out there based on the demographics of the person that they can see physically. And, and you know, they're making a guess at what age they are. I mean, she never, she's not going to guess something like Aloysius or um, Guillermo or something like that. <laughs> she's going to pick something that is a popular name, right? And again, this is, this is saying, I mean, maybe Cindy has a Helen or a, <laughs> or a, a Henry or something like that in her family. I mean, the, obviously it's a very popular name, but the the guessing is that she's giving you this wide range of it could be this, this, this. Just tell us what it is, okay? How about a last name? That might be more helpful than giving us a first name. Do you think the dead have forgotten their last name? Or maybe the last four digits of the social security number or their uh, phone number for their childhood's phone number or, you know, what was the address they lived at when they were born, you know, the first, first place they lived or the first place they owned. There's a lot of ways of verifying it. So when she says, who could this Helen person be or Helene or whatever, I mean, just tell us, just say, so your your aunt Helen is here and she says now she she's telling me that she um she died when you were six so you don't remember her but she's been watching over you and she loved seeing you go to the piano recitals that made her so happy because your your aunt Helen play, played piano I don't know if you know that or not but she played piano and she uh, just adored whenever you would have these piano recitals she's so proud of you i mean it's not it's never anything specific like that right in the motivated sitter's mind later whenever they go to repeat the story to their family and friends they will report repeat the story like oh aunt helen came through and she knew that i played the piano oh my gosh there's that's how it's remembered but that's not what's actually said so let's go back to see what um Lady Phyllis has in store for, for her again here. Mm, no. Oh, so I, I don't know who they are. Could belong to somebody else. Okay. Somebody. And um, are you married? No. And um. you, don't, you don't have a child, correct? No. No. Um, do you have a, an animal that passed that was like a child to you? No. Not a bird or a cat? No. Okay, so I don't know who that is either. Y you sure you didn't have a, a, an animal that passed? Not when I was a kid. Okay, so you yeah. did have... Okay, and uh, this was a dog? A cat. Okay, well, I said the first thing, a cat. Okay, well, oh. yeah, but that was a while ago. Doesn't matter. A cat stays with you no matter what. Like it was a special relationship. Yeah. Maybe, you know, you think it's years ago, but that cat's been with you. Okay. Yeah. And um, contemporary-wise, do you have a colleague that passed that you were close with? Was there a friend that you were close with that passed? No. No. You don't have a male friend that passed? Um. A cousin, somebody who would be contemporary to you. I have a male who passed and a C name, like Kurt, Craig. No? No, I, I, I'm thinking about the guys I know, that even their middle names. Actually, some of them I don't know their middle names, but no. Okay, I'm also getting an M name like Michael for you. Oh. Mike, Michael. Cousin, but he's still here. Okay, so you have a cousin. And is this cousin related to the aunt that passed? Actually, no. That's the other side of the family. And I have a B name on the other side, like Bert or, or Bruce or Barry.
No. No, not not a B name. Um, Don't tell me. I'd rather they do the work for it. Yeah. <laughs> not a B. Not not a B name. Okay. Again, there's a lot of people on here, but sometimes you do think of the names afterwards. Like tonight, you'll say, "Oh my God, I forgot about so and so," or "It's yeah. been so long." But they, there are people on the other side that surround you. But particularly your aunt draws the closest and wants you to know that she's with you. And she's re now you starting some kind of new. All right, let's just stop for a second. As I said, I think we're getting close to winding this down, if I remember correctly. She's really blowing it. Cindy, Cindy doesn't know what to say except, you know, me telling her say whatever you want because she's not even close to her husband who is a pilot um she asks her are you married and cindy is not married she's a widow according to the story i gave right okay and, um uh she hasn't come on she hasn't hit the name that we gave the that i gave the husband cindy doesn't know what the name is that i gave the husband because i gave the husband a name it's none of these Kurt, Craig, a C name. Do you have anything? <laughs> oh my gosh, she's, she's just bombing. Um, the way she words the questions: Are you married? Well, don't you know? Do you do you don't have any children? Do you? That's almost like yes or no. Um, yes, I do, or no, I don't. Um, I mean, shouldn't she know? Do you have an animal, a bird, or a cat that has died? Um, and then Cindy's finally like, okay, yeah, when I was a kid. She goes, oh, well, is, is it a dog? <laughs> oh, it's a cat? Oh, cats will stay with you forever. I mean, if you had a close personal relationship with. I mean, she's looking for anything that might have died. And Cindy's like, well, you know, you, you feel you feel for Lady Phyllis. And this is kind of what people do is they they want the reading to continue in the hopes that they will eventually get to the person or the, the, the animal that they really, really want to hear from. And so you kind of want to throw the psychic a bone and say, all right, already. OK, I did have a I did have a pet when I was a little kid or my neighbor had a pet that I absolutely adored or, you know, let me give you something, anything, because I feel it's so awkward whenever they keep, they're getting nailed, you know, wrong, 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 wrong. Okay. So do you have a, a colleague, somebody you work with who could have died? <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you have a male friend who could have died? <laughs> I mean, how broad is this getting? And then it, it, when Cindy finally admitted, okay, yeah, all right, I had a cousin who's died. Um, you know, the, she's like, oh, good, you know. Kurt, Craig, or a C name of any kind. I'm not going to go look up on, this, on the uh, Social Security database these names, but but you can, you know, is Kurt or Craig a, a, a common name? Craig probably is for somebody about Cindy's age that could be a contemporary of hers. Uh, Michael. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what do we say? Michael's almost always one of the top names. Mike or Michael. Of course, you know a Michael. You probably know 1,500 Michaels out there. Well, what about Michael? And Cindy, you know, because she just can't handle the awkwardness again, is like, well, I had a cousin named Michael. And she says, well, is it? On the same side of the aunt, she's like, no. How about a Bert, a Bruce, a Barry? And then this is always very, very, very common. And I remember Mark Edward says this. And when hopefully you'll go watch the video or you've already watched the first video that I made for Operation Dill Pickle. And in it, I put a little um, clip of Mark Edward uh, doing a readings at a mall back in the 1990s for a tv show and the psychic that was on there was like if you don't got it now think about it and maybe it'll make sense later because that's what always happens is they think they think of it later 
And so that's a common trope that psychics will have. Oh, well, just because you don't know now, go ask your mom, go, go look at your family tree. I remember John Edward used to tell people, bring your family tree with you. <laughs> bring a copy of your family tree with you so you can so you can know who these people are they're talking about. I guarantee if he's communicating or any of these people are communicating with the dead and the best you can come up with is a letter of the alphabet that you're supposed to fit together on a family tree or a first name that you're supposed to find somewhere in this family tree. Why did, if they really want to communicate with you, they're going to give you a last name or they're going to say, I'm your aunt Bertha's son. Now I died when I was a little boy. And so you never remembered that, but I was your aunt Bertha's son. And uh, so, you know, you were born after me, but, you know, I'm your spirit person. Or, I don't know. They're going to tell you how they're related. They're going to say, you know, I was, um, you don't remember me, but uh, I was a little boy who died. Uh, the, we were in uh, kindergarten, first grade together. And, and thank you for this opportunity to make this portal with Lady Phyllis that I can come through. Can you get a message to my mom, you know? They're going to say, they're not going to give you this alphabet stuff. All right, so let's go see what's left. Oh, please tell me we're almost over. Let's find out. I can't remember. It's so awkward to watch this. Venture or project. Are you going into doing something new? Um, Just thinking about it, but I haven't got anything. But you're thinking about I yeah. yeah go ahead yeah. but you're thinking about doing something yeah and is it something that's outside of it's like something that you've always wanted to do but it's not in your wheelhouse right now it it's it's along the lines of what i would like to do it's i would say it is kind of in my wheelhouse of interest but not of um yeah, because, because yeah. I, I feel like she wants you to go ahead to make that jump and do it. Like, okay. is it something that involves like an arts and crafts or like something, something like painting or it's something involving the arts? Um, yeah, it involves the arts, mm -hmm. but yeah, I guess if my aunt was here, she'd say I could do it, <laughs> that I'd be good at doing it. Well, she wants you to do it. Yeah. She wants you to do it, and and go after, follow your dream. Yeah, and she says, "Don't be afraid. If not now, when?" Kind of thing. Do you have any questions? No, I've been thinking about that during your whole your whole sessions, and I can't think of of what um just how's my aunt doing over there she's doing great you know she's doing great she's she says she's a lot better there than she was here when okay. she was here she was the way she describes herself the way she presented herself to me i saw auntie Maine. you know the movie auntie Maine. i'm not saying she was like that but she was larger than life do you understand like that's how she i get an image and that's how i knew it was there was a woman of your mother's age you know of your mother's generation who was important to you i knew it wasn't a grandmother it was an you know i go to mother-in-law not your mother then i go to mother-in-law then I, I went you said aunt or i don't remember but the point is she is so she's right behind this shoulder and she's watching you and she's even poking you and saying, go after your dream, do it, do it, do it. Well, your father is more removed back and he's more like, I get a feeling of reserve with him where it's like, I don't know, I don't know. He's more reserved, but your aunt is all about going and doing, but there is regret that she's not there to make it easier for you. There is some challenge. I don't know if it's taking care of your mother. I don't know if it's communicating with your mom, but she does indicate that, that you're missing a piece in your life now. And she's the missing piece. And, and for that, she's sorry, but she says, you know what, you know what to do. Mm -hmm. 
don't let somebody cover your light don't let somebody detract from your from your goals okay and is that what she would have told you in life yeah it sounds like her so it, it makes no and i am getting an h name i hear harriet now they are they are not giving up there is an h name so you've got well, to think, yeah go ahead an old family friend named henry but he's uh um He's actually in an old age home, suffered from Alzheimer's. Okay, so who knew Henry? Was it your father or your aunt? Actually, no, my, my mom did. Your mom did. Well, yeah. they're bringing up Henry for a reason. You know, they're bringing up Henry for a reason. So it's an old family friend and maybe yeah. you have to prepare your mother that Henry's headed in a certain direction. I don't know. But, yeah. but somebody's bringing up, I hear, the, I hear that ha, ha, ha sound. So, okay. Right. But good luck. Good luck with whatever you choose to do. All right. I hope you fly with it. Okay. It was good hearing from her again. Good. I'm glad. Before, I wish she would give me her name. I do also hear Irene or Elaine. I hear a name that starts with a vowel, like Eileen, Elaine. No? Around no. around the aunt. Did she have a child with that name? Or does she have a friend with that name? Okay. No. Just hold no. on to those names. Think about it because you may you may think of who they are afterwards. Okay. Okay. All right, thank okay. you very much. All right. All right. Who did I not do? Michelle. Michelle. Okay, what'd you guys think? It is really hard to watch these. Imagine having to sit there and watch these uh, for hours. My, my my team, this is what we do. This is what I do a lot. Uh, thankfully, I don't ask people, all the same people to help me each time. But it's excruciating to watch. It's it's just awkward. and. But seriously, I feel like we really need to know what's going on and watch this and see these kinds of things. Okay. So do you have a new project and adventure, anything? Give me something. Cindy is the kind of sitter that nobody wants to have. That is just kind of like, I don't really have any questions. I'm just kind of there, you know, whatever. And, you know, I, nothing's making sense. And apparently I don't have any pets or kids or family members. <laughs> I mean, you know, it must be really awkward to do this. And this is a person who is not a motivated necessarily sitter because she's not really, she's, she's not, she's not there. She's, she's not there for those reasons. She's making the psychic work and she was trying to make her work and she sure as heck did. But you can see Cindy kind of giving her something because it was so awkward. Is there something, anything out there that you've always wanted to do that could be in your wheelhouse? Anything? How about painting? Again, with a painting. And, and it's because the psychic is looking right at Cindy and all that beautiful artwork behind her. And she's getting painting, 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 you know. So that's where she goes, painting or the arts. Okay, your aunt wants you to do it right now. Do it. If you don't do it now, you'll, you're will you never going to do it. So just do it. All right. Do you have any questions? Because Lady Phyllis is kind of done here. And <laughs> Cindy's like... How's my aunt doing over there? <laughs> okay. So again, we don't have any name. What's the aunt's name? That might help a lot. You know, she's watching you. She's poking you. She's pushing you to go and do the things. Your father is back here. Now, is that helpful? Is that good? Is that, is that kind to have the idea that your aunt's always watching you? Like always watching you? How about your dad? He's always watching you. I mean, you know, come on, that can get really kind of intimate there. And that's not a good idea to think that your mom, I mean, how good is that for you in life to think that your your aunt or your dad is always there watching you? Okay. I don't know why people think that that's a good thing. I think it's creepy as hell. Um, but I mean, what if she had a really good relationship with her father? Or what if she had a, 
you know, he was a loving man, maybe died when she was young and he loved her to pieces. But now she's left with the impression that her father was, is withdrawn. He's, he's not um, like a loving father. He's not um, engaged in her life. I mean, how does it, how do you think that makes you feel? What impression is that left of your father? If you really, really believed this and your father was a good, loving man, maybe he had divorced your mom, maybe for good reason, I don't know, or he died young and you didn't really know him that well. What does that say? Is that, is that kind? Is it helpful? Is that good? Is that, is that ethical? To leave a person with the impression that the father is not, you know, really engaged in your life and really interested in your life and withdrawn. I, I don't think that's ethical. I don't think it's kind. These are not memories that somebody would want to to um, be left with. So, I mean, if if it's my dad, I want to I want to be left with positive that, you know, he's he's he loves me. He's watching me. He's going to tell me what shares to buy in stock and where he hid the can, the tin can full of quarters and that I haven't found. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Share some wealth, you know, where did he bury that? Okay. Um, that the aunt's the missing piece and she apologizes because she's supposed to be the liaison for having a better relationship with her mom. Oh, and then Harriet Henry, ha, ha, ha sound. I just can't get a laugh. I'm getting a ha, ha, ha sound. Yeah, that was me in the background going, ha, 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 ha. This is absolutely awful. Eileen, Irene, Elaine, do you have a child? Did she have a child or a friend? Did your aunt have a friend or a child? It could have been Eileen, Irene, or Eileen, or anything. And, you know, since nothing hit, just think about those names. So I don't know how you thought, but that was really awkward. And she's trying really hard with the names. Nothing, what is missing, like everything. And like she says, I wish she would tell me her name. Why wouldn't she tell you her name? Lady Phyllis. She went to contact and talk to her, her, her favorite niece, right? Why isn't she saying her name? Why isn't she telling you Cindy's mom's name? Why isn't she giving some information of some kind other than do what you want to do and be, you know, do that unnamed task that maybe you've been thinking about? Okay, was this helpful? I don't think Cindy found it helpful. Okay, I... I I found it excruciating and unhelpful and a waste of time and money. So how did the woman actually do when it came to the hot reading information I gave? She got zero. The woman did read what I, what I wrote when I sent it to her, but nothing was on there. We were hoping that she was going to, See, she was going to give a story about how Cindy's husband, who I gave a name to, which was none of these, how Cindy's husband had um, been a pilot. He was overseas when he died and um, he died in his sleep and he was about to retire and that they had this nice life planned of things that they were going to do and they were going to travel or he was going to make a garden or whatever it was that I had said and that uh, she wanted to know you know, because she was so far away from him when he died that, you know, did he have any last thoughts or any, had any messages for her? That's what I was hoping to get. And this is nada, nothing like it. Um, she said, and then let's remember that Lady Phyllis is supposedly a medium and she's in contact with dead people that are around people. Right now, I don't know how they're supposed to be doing it over Zoom, but I guess the dead can talk to you anywhere, I guess, you know. But Cindy has real dead people around her. There have been people who, well, there have been people in her life who have died. And Lady Phyllis should have been able to, like she did all the other people ahead of her, all the other women, she should have been able to say, 
your name isn't Diane. There is something false about you today. Your name is a C name like Cindy, and you're here under false pretenses. And you, your, your ticket was paid for by um, somebody who's, who is a huge skeptic and is always, you know, something's going on here. This isn't legit. And that the money that was used to pay for your ticket came from this very evil source, which would have been James Randi's Educational Foundation. That's who gave me the money to be able to put the sting on to be able to pay for these tickets. Um, so she didn't catch any of that. I'm on the screen as, you know, this huge critic of the psychic world. She didn't catch that I was there or that I was a very close friend of Cindy's and that I put her up to this. None of that came through. And she didn't get anybody who is Cindy's real family members. Even if she knew that Diane was not her real name or she didn't catch that. I mean, that should have been the first thing that her dead family members should have said. Is she, They should have looked at, they should have told her that's not her real name. That The name on the screen and the name she's giving you, that is not her name. You know, even if they didn't tell you it was Cindy, they should have said, that's not her name. That is that is not her. That is not my loved one. And nobody came through. Nobody who has died came through and told Cindy anything that really would have been accurate of any kind. Maybe, maybe Cindy's father has died and he's looking over her shoulder, but what good is that? He's, you know, somebody her age having a father who's died is not totally like inaccurate it's not much of a guess it's like saying her grandfather is probably died you know it's not a big deal so what could she, why did she get nothing i think she talked to her for what 10 minutes how how useful how help help helpful was that now, I'm not going to say it was unethical necessarily because there wasn't really any information given, but it was a it was a bomb. That was that was beyond a fail. She couldn't see through the fact that Cindy was not there under her own name with any kind of goodwill towards her. I mean, Cindy might have wanted to get a reading and maybe have it be real, but you know, there's there was nothing. And Lady Phyllis picked up on nothing. And as you'll see in the reading that she gives me in the other video, it was a bomb, total bomb, beyond a bomb. She was giving me all sorts of dead people in my family that I don't have. So, you know, and Cindy, you know, says, well, there is a, there is a Henry that's in the old folks home and he's, you know, he's got dementia and immediately Lady Phyllis seizes on that and says, well, maybe that's why they brought him up and they have a message for him. Who, who is he connected to? And Cindy's like, well, it's my mom's friend or my mom's somebody or mom knows or something old family friend of my mom's. Oh, okay. Well then that must be the message they want. Uh, they want, um, you to go to your mom and tell her that that Henry's health isn't good. Well, <laughs> I think that he's in an old folks home with dementia. Shouldn't that be obvious? What kind of message? Her mom's going to go, duh. He's not long for this world. And who is they? They want you to, I guess, the aunt. I don't even know if that aunt exists. It just, this is what we're seeing in these small group readings. It's, it's, it's not what you see on TV with the heavily edited TV shows where it's very glib and it's very fast and they're so accurate. And the people on the screen are just like, oh yes, that's absolutely right. How did you know? Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And this is what's going on now. When, when, Lady Phyllis knows the person. 
and the person's very motivated, like it's the person who comes back repeatedly, that's called a hot reading because she knows something about them because she's given them previous readings before and gotten information from them, from them about you know, the last time she had given them a reading. A lot of these women come back time after time after time. And you'll see that in some of the other videos I will eventually release. Okay, so do we pass any of the small tests? Did she give a legal advice? No. Did she give health advice? No. Did she give um, legal advice? Oh, I said that. Legal, health, uh, financial? No, none of those. She just gave her platitudes you know, go about and do what you're going to do. You know, your aunt wants you to do it and, and you're going to be okay. And you're going to succeed in this and, you know, those kinds of things. But is that really advising her? What if Cindy really had a question that was too shy to ask about something that was probably maybe not good for her? Maybe, maybe Cindy's involved in a romance scam and the person she's speaking to online, she thinks is really, a real person and she's giving money to that person and and here here the psychic comes along and says yeah you're doing the right path keep going <laughs> was that ethical we don't know you know sometimes people don't say like they'll come to these readings and they're too embarrassed to say and they'll say to themselves well if she isn't picking up on it maybe maybe i won't mention it because i guess it's not a big deal maybe i will invest in that swamp land in florida Maybe <laughs> she's not saying it's not a bad idea. Uh, sh she's not telling me anything about the, the the health scares I'm having. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just cancel my doctor's visits this month that I was going to have because, you know, I f I'm not feeling really good. Psychic isn't picking up on any of it. So I guess it's all right. So I could put off that my um, my doctor's appointments for you know, a few more months. I'll, I'll, I'll do it after Christmas. I'll do it in the new year, right? Because the psychic didn't tell me that there was anything there. They didn't see anything. They didn't warn me. And my aunt loved me. Of course, she would have warned me. You get where it's going? Okay. So she didn't actually do anything unethical, but sometimes it's the things that you're missing that's the unethicalness of it all. Because there's things in the person's, a sitter's mind that they sometimes don't voice that the person doesn't pick up on because they're not psychic. So I hope you like this. As I, Thank you for staying with me all this time. It's it's Like I said, it's hard to do these things. You see why it takes me a, a year or more to come up with these videos because they're really hard to do. Um, I've seen these multiple times. It's, it's, it's kind of painful to watch. I'm not the kind of person who likes cringy kind of things like, you know, Monty Python, um, Faulty Towers, those kinds of shows. I've never been good at watching those kinds of things because it's so awkward and it just feels, it feels embarrassing for, for some people watching them. And so I don't like doing them. Um, people tell me often that they can't watch these videos I'm making because it's, it's too it's too hard for them to watch, but I think we need to. I think we need to understand the human nature and, and the vulnerability that these people have. Now, the other videos that I have coming out on this Operation Dill Pickle are going to be real people. Uh, let's see. Let's see how well, if people watch this one and leave me a lot of comments, then I'll, I'll do the other videos. But um, I have to know that you have any interest in this because, you know, I'm <laughs> there's no money in this. I'm certainly not getting any fame. And of course, I'm always at risk that, um, you know, that, I mean, I could be doing something else. And I need to know that you guys enjoy this or not enjoy it, but you're learning and you find this helpful in some way. I don't know. Leave me comments. Um, I love your feedback. Thank you guys so much. Like and share.